Hi, my name is Julius and I get a band 9 on my first attempt at taking the IELTS speaking test. Welcome to IELTS Dragon. So today, let me answer the recent IELTS speaking part 1 topic questions. There are 12 topics and 48 topic questions that I answered in this video. So please watch the entire video so that you will get many more ideas for each topic. I also encourage you to watch my other video, which is about part one topic questions and answers for the months January to April so that you can prepare better. But before that, uh, I'll be very happy if you subscribe to this channel or give this video a like so that this video will be pushed to many more viewers who are also preparing for their IELTS speaking test like you. Thank you so much in advance. Let's talk about sitting down. Where is your favorite place to sit? Well, I can sit anywhere. I'm not picky about the place as long as I can sit down and rest, especially if I feel extremely tired after standing or walking for such a long period of time. I can sit down on a comfortable couch, on the grass, on the seashore, or even on the floor. I don't mind at all. I love sitting on a beanbag. We have a huge beanbag at home placed on our porch. Well, every time I want to relax, I just sit on it for hours. Sitting on it is incredibly comfortable, and I sometimes fall asleep on it. Do you always sit down for a long time? Unfortunately, yes. I have a sedentary lifestyle because of the nature of my work. I know it's not healthy, but I can't do anything about it. But anyway, I spend time exercising during my days off, and those are the only days that I can be physically active. Not at all, because it's not healthy. When I'm at work, I usually spend time walking around the office from time to time because I don't want my belly to get fat. Besides, sitting for such a long period of time poses a high risk of acquiring serious diseases like diabetes or high blood pressure. I can't afford to be sick. Do you feel sleepy when you are sitting down? Definitely, and I think that's pretty normal because sitting down is not being active. What's worse is when I do a lot of paperwork. There are times that I can't help myself but fall asleep. I'm just lucky that my boss hasn't caught me sleeping yet. Well, not always. There are times that I feel that way. However, I usually try my best not to fall asleep when I'm sitting down, especially if I'm at work because I don't want my manager to catch me. Personally, that's a big sin. So I always make sure to have a cup of coffee on my table. When you were a kid, did you usually sit on the floor? Yes, when I was a kid, I enjoyed sitting on the floor because I usually played with Lego blocks. I could sit for hours and not complain because I was just so focused on playing. I actually did that every weekend because that's the only time that I could play since I needed to spend my weekdays studying. Well, only when I played with my toys because I couldn't play with them on the couch or on my bed. So the floor was the only place where I could lay down all of my tiny and huge toys all together. That was fun because I could do anything with my toys since the floor was white. Let's talk about boredom. What kinds of things are boring to you? Well, reading thick novels or watching movies that are completely uninteresting, waiting for someone for such a long period of time, queuing, and heavy traffic. If I'm in any of these situations, I can't help myself but feel so frustrated because my time is only wasted. So, as much as possible, I make sure not to be involved in any of those cases. My life is just so precious to deal with boredom. I don't easily get bored as I'm a very patient person. However, if I talk to someone who can't handle conversations or doesn't make any effort to converse, then that's the time that I get bored. Other than that, I can deal with those things that are boring to some people. What will you do when you feel bored? If I'm at home, I simply take an app to refresh my mind or recharge my batteries. 
However, if I'm outside, like I'm stuck in traffic, I just listen to music or read something on my smartphone because normally I can't do anything in those situations. I try my very best not to get irritated because it'll only make my day bad. Well, feeling bored is normal. We all feel that from time to time. So I don't normally take it seriously as I don't want to get upset. Anyway, I just do something that would change my mood. For example, if I talk to someone who's boring, I change the topic or I just politely leave. Or if I'm waiting for someone at a mall and that person is extremely late, I just eat something in a restaurant to make myself better. Do you think going to school is boring? Absolutely not. It's fun going to school as we get to meet new people, learn some new things which can help us develop ourselves, interact with teachers or students who have great minds, and we get to join some competitions or some student activities that promote holistic development. I think those people who believe that schools are boring are indolent or don't have an interest in going to school at all. I think not all the time, but sometimes. It's sometimes boring because some teachers are kind of boring. For instance, they don't have the energy to teach students or their teaching strategies are too conventional. Aside from that, schools are sometimes boring, especially when the administrators are too controlling with their students. That is, students can't completely express themselves because the school regulations restrict them. Do you feel more bored now than when you were young? I think so because I'm a bit impatient. As I said earlier, I hate waiting for someone, queuing, being stuck in traffic, and things like that. In the past, especially during my childhood days, I was completely different. I don't think I knew about boredom during those times as all I wanted was to play and have fun with my friends. I think there weren't any dull moments back then. Considering my responsibilities as an adult, I can't be bored. Well, I should have the energy and motivation to work, and I never allow myself to get bored with my work because I have bills to pay. Well, when I was a kid, I got easily bored and I threw tantrums from time to time because I was a child. I didn't know how to control myself then. Are you busy and eagerly want to pass the test because your agencies are pressuring you to submit your IELTS result? Then I'd like to offer you my reviewers. My reviewers helped many students pass the test without me coaching them. They just used my reviewers to prepare efficiently and successfully get their desired band scores. My reviewers include 25 cue cards and 100 part 3 practice questions and answers. They are equipped with monologues and part 3 answers that are prepared in a natural and conversational way. If you're wondering how to get a band 7 or 7.5 for only using my reviewers, then send me an email. I will send you samples of my reviewers and see for yourself if you need a full version of my reviewers. In case you're interested to get a full version, they're actually on sale at the moment. Don't hesitate to send me an email because I will definitely reply to you. I'll wait for your mail. Let's talk about advertisements. Which advertisements are you interested in watching? TV advertisements or internet advertisements? Honestly, none of them. I hate ads simply because they are distracting. I hate it when I'm watching the very exciting part of a TV drama, then all of a sudden it's cut because ads need to play. All the high intense emotions are spoiled because of the commercial, and that's undeniably annoying. Well, I think nobody likes advertisements because they're usually time consuming. However, if I had to choose one between the two, I'd rather go for internet ads because I have a choice to skip them. Unlike the TV ads that I really needed to endure a series of commercials until the TV program that I watch returns. What kinds of advertisements do you dislike? <laughs> All of them. Like I said earlier, I hate ads as they are stealing my time. However, I really understand because those ads are the ones that fuel the TV network, social media companies like YouTube and Facebook, and content creators financially. 
without ads, those institutions and video creators won't exist since ad money is making them survive in the industry. I abhor those ads that portray violence, especially those mobile or computer game shooting ads. I'm very sensitive to shooting scenes because of the never-ending shooting violence in the US. I think those kinds of ads influence children or people who are mentally ill or those who have psychopathic or sociopathic behavior. I believe those types of ads can trigger them to do something nasty. Are there many advertisements in your country? Undeniably, yes. There are countless of them, especially when you're watching a TV program. Because there are so many ads, you're highly likely to lose interest in the program as those ads spoil your enthusiasm, unfortunately. Unfortunately, yes. So many of them that you can't even count. Not only in the traditional media, but even on the internet and in the streets. Well, that's not surprising since the advertising industry is giant. Almost all companies rely on ads to promote their products and services to people as that method is the most effective revenue driver. Do you want to work in the advertising industry in the future? No, I don't think I have any talent for advertising. I believe if one wants to work in that kind of industry, he must have creativity and the ability to convey the message of the product or service that can surely entice people. And honestly, I don't think I possess those kinds of skills. Well, if there's an opportunity, then why not? I'm the kind of person who loves trying new things. I think I'll be able to utilize my creative thinking skills if I get a chance to work in the advertising industry. I know that working in that industry is demanding, but I'm up for it. Let's talk about books and reading habits. Do you often read books? Yes, I do. For me, reading is a must as it helps me widen my knowledge about so many things. Besides, it's a very good way to improve my vocabulary and creative thinking skills. Actually, I'm more into reading fiction, business, and history books. It's such a shame to admit this, but I rarely read books. I don't know, I find it boring. It makes me feel sleepy, most especially if they're history books. I know I sound dumb because I don't read books, but I just can't force myself to read some. I guess if I had cultivated reading habits when I was little, I think I would have become a bookworm. Are your reading habits now different than before? Well, I think it's just the same. The only thing that's different now is that I read a lot of business or finance books because I find them so fascinating. You know what? These days, I've been learning about early retirement, investing, and anything that's money-related. I think this is common to some people, especially when they get older. Nothing has changed. I'm still the type of person who doesn't read books. Like I said earlier, people who know that I don't read books will surely think how dumb I am, but this is me. My interest is not in reading books, but in listening to music and playing musical instruments. Have you ever read a novel that has been adapted into a film? Yes, of course, and most of them are novels written by Nicholas Sparks. Well, there was a time when I was a teen. I was idealistic back then, like any other normal teen. Because, you know, a teen doesn't know so much about life and love. Wow, remembering those years is bittersweet. Unfortunately not. I remember some of my friends excitingly talked about the novels that they read and invited me to watch those films that are based on the novels that they enjoyed reading. During those times, I felt so left out because I wasn't into reading even novels. I couldn't share anything with them when they were talking about those novels which they thought were interesting. Which do you prefer? Reading books or watching movies? That's hard because I do love both. However, if I needed to choose one, I'd go for reading books because reading stimulates my imagination. I can create images in my mind based on the events that are described in the books. 
Well, movies are fun and entertaining, but visuals are already fed in front of our very eyes. So it's not as challenging as reading. Without a doubt, watching movies. That's actually one of my favorite hobbies. It does relieve my stress and I get to learn so many things from the movies that I watch. Besides, it's way more entertaining than reading books. I won't fall asleep like I normally do if I read a book. Let me give a shout out to my one-on-one -on -one coaching program students who recently passed the test. Janice Anisita, Band 7.5. Isla May Bo, Band 7. Shinamei Ocampo, Band 7. Also to students who used my reviewers and passed the test. Eileen May, Band 7. Nailia Ismailova, Band 7. Andrea Kisada, Band 7. Congratulations, students. Thank you so much for hiring me as your coach and for using my reviewers. We made it. Congratulations and good luck on your future endeavor. Finally, I also want to congratulate my avid viewers who just watched my videos and successfully passed the test. Sonia Maria, Band 8, Ben, Band 7, Christina, Band 7, and Chica, Band 7. And to you all who are watching this video, I'm really looking forward to reading your success story and mentioning your name in my next video. You can do it. Let's talk about collecting things. Do you collect things? Yes, I do. I've been collecting stamps and handmade souvenirs from the places that I've traveled to. Actually, I've been collecting stamps since I was 13 when my Swedish friend sent me a letter. I got interested in the stamp that stuck to his letter. As for handmade souvenirs, I started collecting them when I was 18. Yes, however, I don't consider myself an avid collector of only one particular thing. I randomly collect things when I find them worth keeping. Well, I have kept some jewelry, watches, sneakers, mugs, plants, especially uh, succulents and some pens. I don't know, I find fulfillment whenever I do this. Actually, it's really fun. Are there any things you keep from childhood? Yes, I still have my favorite toys. My toys when I was 5 to 8 years old. I actually keep them in a cabinet in my room as I consider them my valuable collections. They're valuable because they're part of my childhood and each of them has a story worth telling. Well, there's one thing from my childhood days that I still have with me these days and it's my pillow. It's a small pillow whose cover is my favorite Disney movie, The Lion King. It's already faded, however, I'm still keeping it as I can't really let go of it. I feel like if I throw it away, I'm forgetting my innocent days and my wonderful childhood memories. Would you keep old things for a long time? Why not? In fact, we do have a lot of old furniture in the house. Each of them is valuable because of its old age. They're all antique and undeniably, the market value of those things is high. So we will be keeping them for a long period of time. Yes, I would really love to, most especially those that can be sold at a higher price in the long run. The longer I keep those things, the higher the monetary value they get. Actually, I learned this from my grandpa because he has some vintage cars and honestly, he's gotten some really good offers from collectors. Where do you usually keep things you need? Well, luckily our house is quite big, so we have an extra room for storage and our garage has some spaces where I can keep some valuable things. However, I also use my room to keep those personal things that I really need because there's no other best place where I can store my personal things than my bedroom. Well, that depends. If those important things are my personal belongings, of course, I have to keep them in my bedroom. If not, we have a storage room in our house where we can keep those valuables safe. Let's talk about computers. What do you use computers for? Obviously, I use computers for typing documents 
and for online movie streaming. I think I'm not the only one who's doing this since these are the common uses of computers. It's either for work or for entertainment purposes. And fortunately, I don't have a computer at home since it's not a need for me. I have my smartphone or a tablet where I can watch movies or surf the web. However, I use a computer at work for sending emails, typing some documents, and for video presentations. When was the first time you used a computer? If I remember correctly, that was when I was 15 years old. We had a computer subject in high school and we needed to learn how to operate it. I learned basic computer skills such as creating presentations, word processing, creating spreadsheets, and video calling. That was really fun as most of us didn't have any experience of using a computer, so we're kind of scared of operating computers. I started using a computer when I was only 8 years old. Well, I was born in a computer age, so it's very common to use computers at a very young age. I remember I made a PowerPoint presentation about my favorite animals, which I presented in front of the class. I didn't have any difficulty using a computer back then since my older brother was my tutor. What would your life be like without computers? Without computers, I believe my work would be so laborious. Well, part of my work is to send emails to our clients, so if there's no computer, I think I would be so exhausted visiting a post office to and fro. Not only that, my hands would be paralyzed from writing 10 to 20 pages of contracts for our clients. Uh, thinking about it is just insane. I think life would be dull because I'm so dependent on using a computer. It's a tool that helps me entertain and get educated by finding some important information online. Besides, I wouldn't be able to do online banking or book a plane ticket very easily without computers. Thanks to computers, my life or our lives have been so comfortable. Do you think computers have changed your life? Definitely. When I was an elementary student, computers were not that popular yet, so most of the time I needed to go to a public library to study. However, when I was a high school and college student, I heavily relied on using a computer to do my assignment or to learn something which I didn't learn in school. And now that I'm a worker, computers have helped me work efficiently. Without a doubt, because of computers and the easy access to the internet, my understanding of so many things has widened. I can say that I'm more educated now since there's easy access to information. Not only that, I can watch movies as much as I want without breaking the bank, thanks to online movie streaming sites. Let's talk about evening time. Are you more active in the morning? or in the evening. I believe I'm more active in the morning. That is simply because I'm a morning person. I can work efficiently during the day since I'm more energized. I once worked on a graveyard shift and I noticed that I wasn't as effective as during the day. Since then, I decided to choose a job that's 9 to 5. Obviously, as I'm a night owl, I'm very active in the evening or during the night. Ever since I started working, I usually report to work either in the afternoon or in the evening. I don't know, but I can focus on working more during a graveyard shift. That's when everyone is sleeping. I think that's because the ambience is calming. What do you usually do in the evening? Aside from the fact that I sleep, I actually meditate before hitting the hay. Meditating helps me think clearly and at the same time improves my physical being. Actually, I've been doing this since last year and I couldn't be happier. Well, nothing special. I've been doing what common people are doing during the night and that's uh, watching a movie or TV series. This is my way of relieving stress after working for hours in the office. This has been my habit since I started working. What did you enjoy doing in the evening when you were little? Well, I enjoyed playing Nintendo games. 
I had fun playing Super Mario and my brother and I usually got into a fight because I didn't like giving him a chance to play with me. I was kind of selfish back then. Remembering those days makes me really miss my childhood. I didn't do a lot of activities at night when I was a kid, except for watching my favorite cartoon after doing my homework. I spent an hour watching TV since my parents allowed me to do so as long as I completed my homework. So it was my way of making myself relaxed after a long day at school. Are there any differences between what you do in the evening now and what you did in the past? Yes, compared to last year, I'm now more relaxed. Last year, I was completely busy even during the night because I was working on a very important project. As a result, I needed to give up exercising and I couldn't do one of my hobbies, which is watching movies or TV series. Currently, I can do all those things and meditation has been added. Of course, since I was a student back then, most of my time during the night was spent studying or doing some school projects. However, these days, I have more time to relax at night. I can go to the park at night and jog, or I can stay at home and be a couch potato before hitting the sack. Let's talk about lost and found. Have you ever lost things? Absolutely. Unfortunately, I'm kind of forgetful that every now and again, I lost my keys, hankies, and pens. I've been like this since I was a child, and I really don't know why this happens to me oftentimes. I don't know, I think I have some type of personality disorder. Of course, and I think that's pretty normal. All of us experience losing some valuables from time to time, most especially if there are so many things going on in our minds. We tend to forget things easily since we can't focus. Just recently, I lost my wallet and that was a real hassle since all of my bank cards were kept in that wallet. Will you post on social media if you lose your item? Well, I'm not into using social media so obviously I won't be able to do that. Normally, if I lose something, I just recall the places where I visit since it's highly likely that I somehow drop it in any of those places. Sometimes I'm lucky enough because I'm able to find the item that's lost. I've never tried doing that before, so if I lose something important in the future, well, God forbid, I think I will do that since social media is very helpful these days. If social media could find ways to reunite family members who lose contact with each other for so many years, then there's no reason why it won't help me find some lost items of mine. What will you do if you find something lost by others? As a good citizen, I will surely return it to someone or report it to the lost and found office because it's the right thing to do. All of us have a social responsibility or a moral obligation toward others, so it's just imperative to return the lost item to the real owner. For sure, I will find a way to give that lost item back to the rightful owner simply because I know the feeling of losing something valuable. That's incredibly stressful, especially if the lost item is an important document or a wallet. Besides, I don't believe in the idea of finders keepers. That's just not right. Do you report to the police when finding something lost by others? Definitely, most especially if it's really important such as a passport, a driver's license, a wallet full of bankers and cash and the like. But if it's something petty such as a coin, a dollar bill, a pen and things like that, I don't think I need to do that. I think I'm entitled to keep it. Well, that depends on what I find. If they're personal identification documents, bank cards, passbooks, wallets, or bags full of cash or any valuable and some electronic devices, without a doubt, I will surely report it to the police. But if they're not, I think it's not that necessary to report it. Let's talk about meeting places. Where is your favorite place to meet with your friends? 
Well, I don't think we have one particular place where we love hanging out. We can meet anywhere else and have fun. It may be at a restaurant, a bar, a park, or even an amusement park. I believe we care more about our bonding than the meeting place. Without a doubt, any Italian restaurant. My friends and I love Italian cuisine, so from time to time, we visit that kind of restaurant and devour our favorite dishes while catching up. Actually, we normally see each other at least twice a month since most of us are kind of busy with our personal and professional lives. Do you think there are some places more suitable for meeting with others? Of course, that really depends on the type of event. If it's something formal, especially if it has something to do with business, then a formal restaurant or a function room in a hotel would be best. However, if it's not, I think any type of restaurant or cafe will do, most especially if one is just meeting up with his closest friends. Yes, definitely. Most of the time, a restaurant, a cafe, a function room in a hotel, and even a park are the common places that I can say suitable to meet with other people. However, one must know the right place to choose from depending on the type of person he has to meet. Of course, he can't meet up with a business person at a park nearby because that will be inappropriate. Are there any differences between your favorite meeting places in the present and in the past? As I said earlier, we don't have any favorite meeting place as we are fine meeting up in any place as long as it's safe and clean. So I don't think I can answer that question except that I can say that our meeting places vary a lot depending on accessibility and our mood. Like I said earlier, my friends and I usually meet up at an Italian restaurant, so I don't think there's any difference. But of course, we don't go to only one Italian restaurant all the time whenever we decide to meet because that's pretty boring. There are so many good Italian restaurants in the city that we can choose from. Why are some meeting places better than others? Well, I think that's simply because of the ambience. Some meeting places are homey, which lightens the mood of the visitors. Most of the time, people want a place where they can relax after a very long day or after working on a stressful project. So these things are what's in the mind of the owners that they want their visitors to forget about their work or any problem they have at work or at home. Hmm, I think that's because of the place itself. I mean, the place is so welcoming to visitors. Not only that, the food and drinks are exceptional, and the customer service is beyond compare. People love going to these types of places every now and again because they want the experience of the place which others can't provide. Let's talk about old buildings. Have you ever seen some old buildings in your city? Definitely. There are some buildings in the city that were built in the post-war era. They're actually beautiful because of their distinctive architecture. And you know what? Some of these become tourist attractions because again, they're undeniably beautiful. Yes, and it's hard not to see them because they look so unique compared to the modern buildings erected in the city. Old buildings are for me so special because there is an interesting story behind their existence. Not only that, they witness the change that time has brought, and there's no wonder why they are preserved. Do you think we should preserve old buildings in cities? Well, that really depends on the condition of those old buildings. There are those old buildings that become hazardous, which I really believe must be demolished, and there are those buildings that are historic, yet still safe. So these types of buildings need to be preserved because they're part of the history of a country or the city. For me, those old buildings that tell a story about history or those with cultural value must be preserved. Those types of buildings play an important role in a country's history. Other than that, I think there's no need for them to be preserved. Do you prefer living in an old building or a modern building? Well, I don't mind the age of the building as long as it's completely safe. That is, when there is an earthquake, it won't collapse very easily. Or when it catches fire, there is an easy way to get out of the building. I mean, that should be a priority. 
I love living in a modern type of building because the architectural design is unique. Since it's modern, it's also equipped with modern facilities which are convenient and so important in my opinion. Actually, I'm currently living in a condo unit that is modern and I couldn't be happier. Are there any old buildings you want to see in the future? Yes, I want those old buildings with historical or cultural value to be preserved. The government should protect them as I believe they're a national treasure, especially those old buildings that came from the pre-war or post-war era. Um, they're just valuable. Well, I really want those old buildings with unique architecture to be preserved. I want the future generation to see those types of buildings as for sure they will get some inspiration, especially if those buildings have historical significance. So I hope that the current government will spend time protecting those types of buildings. Let's talk about talents. Do you have any talent? Yes, I do. Every one of us has a special talent and that's a fact. As for me, I'm good at dancing and painting. So whenever I feel unhealthy, I just go to a dance studio nearby and dance. Also, if I'm so inspired, I just pick up my art materials and start painting or sketching. Well, yes, I don't want to sound like I'm blowing my own horn, but I'm really good at cooking. I can cook Mediterranean and Asian cuisines very well. I was able to develop this talent when I was a teen because my mom worked in many different kinds of restaurants and she taught me how to cook. Actually, I'm planning to make use of this talent fully by building my own restaurant. Do you think your talent can be useful for your future work? I'm not sure if my talent can be useful for my work in the future since I'm in the medical field. But it's fine because I can make use of this talent of mine in a different way. Like I said earlier, if I feel less active or depressed, I can do dancing or painting. Well, perhaps I can make use of my talent in dancing to entertain my patients. Well, this talent of mine doesn't have relevance to my current work, but in the future when I can start my own restaurant business, then for sure my talent will be very useful and will surely help me improve my life significantly. Honestly, I can't wait for that to happen in my life, so that's why I'm saving up as much as I can these days so I can build my own restaurant in five years' time. What is one thing you mastered recently or when you were young? That's interesting. Well, I think I have mastered the art of not caring what other people think of me because life is short to live being too concerned about other people's opinions. In the past, I cared so much about uh, people's opinions. However, after I read one of Mark Manson's books, that's when I realized to live with my own rules and not other people's rules. I don't think I have already mastered this, but I'm in the process of mastering solving Rubik's Cube in such a short period of time. I have learned several techniques and I'm getting the hang of it. Honestly, I'm inspired by the videos of skillful children who can solve it in less than a minute. I actually watched them on YouTube and I aspire to be like them. Do you think anyone in your family has the same talent as you? All of us are talented in the family, but our talents are completely different. My dad is really good at numbers, while my mom is good at writing. My older brother is very talented in sports, and my sister is a good singer. And as I said earlier, I'm into painting and dancing. Our respective talents are completely varied. Well, I got my talent for cooking from my mother. I believe cooking is my innate talent, and it has just developed when my mom taught me the different techniques in cooking. So, obviously, my mom and I have the same talent. Let's talk about watches. Do you wear a watch? Yes, I do. I have an automatic and a mechanical watch. I got my automatic watch as a graduation gift from my parents when I attained my undergraduate degree 
while I got a mechanical one when I was promoted to a better position in my previous company. These two watches of mine have a significant meaning in my life. And not at all, I really don't need to wear one as I have my mobile phone to check the time every now and then. For me, watches nowadays are already outdated since people are too dependent on using their smartphones in terms of checking the time since it's more convenient. Have you ever gotten a watch as a gift? As I've said, my parents gifted me with an automatic watch several years ago. I really treasure that watch because it's somehow a representation of my parents' love for me. Not only that, but it also represents my success. I can't imagine losing this watch, so I'm really doing my best to take good care of it. Unfortunately, I haven't gotten one. I would really love to get a watch from someone, however, most of the time, I receive a tie, a handkerchief, a bag, or car accessories when I celebrate my birthday. Perhaps I'll gift myself a watch next birthday. <laughs> Why do some people wear expensive watches? Well, a watch is a status symbol, so some people want to wear that because they want others to know their status in society. This is common among businessmen because they want other people whom they do business with to know that they are dignified or believable or trustworthy because we can't deny the fact that in society, whoever looks expensive will get the highest respect. I'm not sure about it. I guess they wear those expensive watches simply because they want to accessorize themselves for them to look good or maybe some of them just want to show off their possessions. Whatever the reason is, I don't really care because I'm not crazy about watches. Do you think it is important to wear a watch? Honestly, in today's generation, I feel like watches are outdated since a lot of people are now so dependent on their smartphones when they want to check the time. I'm actually one of them. Although I have different watches, I don't wear them every single day because I have a phone that I can use when I need to know the time. I think it's not as important as before. Nowadays, we have smartphones that we can use if we want to check the time, which is incredibly convenient. I think wearing a watch in this computer-dependent generation is not a must. It's just for fashion. If you want to prepare efficiently, again, I'll offer you my reviewers. Send me an email and I will give you my sample reviewers and see for yourself if you need a full version. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to watch the other video of mine which is all about part 1 answers for the months January to April. That video can also help you. Well anyway, if you find value in this video, give me a like or subscribe to this channel. Well, I'll be very happy if you subscribe to this channel. I'll be posting videos related to the IELTS speaking test. Thank you so much. Until next time, have a lovely day. Bye.